Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and we're back again with the direct landing script that Dimitri put together. So after going through the video showing the calculation, I've been trying to uh, make several flights using that calculation just to demonstrate how reliable it is. So we've done five of those flights so far. Four of them were success. One was a fail, but I don't. It, it wasn't a fail of the calculation. It was a fail of me uh, trying to be a bit too aggressive with the time. So we're just going to do a few more of these, and, eh, you know, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Just Probably just a few more. But let's go ahead and switch camera views here and jump into it. So let's look at our flight log. So we've done 16 flights so far. Yeah, 16 so far, 7 successes. And, and there's our data. All right, so let's jump into it. Let's uh, go ahead and skip the intro. And there's our big bang kill the rotation open the retro doors left shift escape right shift escape and let's go ahead and bring up interplanetary go into the base approach and we'll go to more information here and we'll target Brighton Beach all right now let's go ahead and set our base altitude we know that's negative two five six six and the anticipation angle we've been using is negative 0 0.275 and we'll go ahead and stick with that for this flight as well so we're gonna do what we've been doing we're gonna start by setting a time of let's go 2700 which is really and then we're gonna work our way up from there and see you know kind of hopefully find the lowest value so 2900 is looking pretty good we'll probably go with that so 3,000 significantly cheaper, but let's uh, let's see here. Uh, what about 3,100? So that would be re that would be really pushing the time, but that would give us a much better deal on DV. I just don't think that would leave us enough time. So let's go ahead and do the 3,000, and I think that's what we did. Yeah, that's what we did last time as well. So let's go 3,000 and get that burn going. All right. So while that's getting burned. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm actually just going to copy this down because that's the same, that's the same. These are the things that will change, so we'll just delete those. All right, switch back over to the big view, and while that burn's happening, we will bring up GPS VTOL, go to the memory, get Brighton Beach, and then go to ComNav, and we know it's 132.20. And we're going to do 15 uh, for reasons that I've gone over in the last few videos. All right, so that is that burn. Now we're going to bring up burn time calculator and solve our triangle. All right, so according to interplanetary MFD, our reentry velocity is going to be 3670. So we put that number in. And so this is going to be our reentry angle, 44709. And that's going to be our distance, 261,587 uh, meters. So while we're updating the spreadsheet, we'll press kill rotate. And let's go to the spreadsheet and put in our numbers here. So it's going to be 44.709 for the re-entry angle. And 261,585 for the distance. So the, this is the burn distance. Um, which we can't, as a human being, uh, realistically do. So we add a bit to that. I think we can go for 197. So let's do that. Let's plan on doing 197. So we're going to put that value in. 197, 1, 2, 3 is going to be when we begin the burn. And then when we get down to 400 kilometers, I want to compare to the previous method because I just think it's interesting to see those comparisons. All right, let's switch back over here. We're done with this, so let's go ahead and bring up our generic camera. And previous three times gets us to the back camera. Turn off, retrograde, hit kill, hit kill. And let's switch over here and get this dialed into something that we think we might want. Um, something like that. All right, so everything's off, everything's set up, and let's go ahead and warp time four, get down to that 400 kilometer mark come out of time warp, come out of time warp, and come all the way out of time warp, 
and go down to 0 0.1. All right, now retrograde. Um, DV first for the vertical speed. 2817, enter, give that a second to update. It's updated. Control P to pause. And now we're going to put that value into our spreadsheet. So 154, 154924. So that's going to go here. 154924. And switch back over here. Unpause. And now we're going to put in our ground speed. So 35. Two, four. Enter, give that a second. Okay, that's updated. Control P to pause. And now we're going to put that value into our spreadsheet 241399. 241399. All right, so we, this time we have a range of about 86 kilometers. And according to our spreadsheet method, if we're leaning towards the 50%, uh, we would be doing the burn uh, pretty much exactly when we're going to be doing it normally or according to the calculation. So hmm, that's interesting. So the range is pretty small. So when the range is small, it seems to match up pretty well. But I also thought that since this was so much higher than, no, I guess that's in the range of what we were having up here. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'm just trying to make these comparisons just to see you know, and actually, I just realized that might be off the screen, but it was just barely on the screen. I need to pay attention to that better. But, um, yeah, anyway, if we were doing, you know, closer to that 50%, we would be, I think we would, I think we would nail this flight either way. But we're going to do the calculation. So let's go ahead and switch back over here, unpause, go back to real time. And... We don't need this up anymore, so let's bring up GPS VTOL. About eight minutes left. That's a little concerning. 197 kilometers, we begin the burn. So let's go ahead and warp time four, get closer to that point. Come out of time warp, and we're going to begin the burn at 197 kilometers. So just a couple of seconds, and beginning the burn. I feel like I pretty well nailed that. All right, time warping through this part, keeping an eye on the altitude, but it doesn't really matter because we have to get rid of pretty much all of this vertical speed or the vast majority of it. About five minutes left on the clock, plenty of time. Uh, DV is looking really good. Alright, so we're going to keep some of this vertical speed, but not a lot. I'm going to kill it right there. Go level, and we're going to go to our down cam. And when this swings around, that's going to take a moment, so I'm going to go to com nav, go on frequency, select over to the ORBTOL. Go ahead and put down my landing gear now. And we've got a little ways to fall. We're pretty close to the pad, and we're moving towards it ever so slightly. So we're just waiting for our rotation to come all the way around. I um, can probably speed that up a little bit. Of course, I always press the wrong direction every time. Okay, so we're just about lined up. And we're lined up. Maybe just a bit more forward velocity. And translate over to get that better. All right, so we don't want to take too long here. I'm going to go ahead and put in a bit of hover offset because I am a little worried about that you are clear to land. and I think we have plenty of fuel all right take out all that hover should have taken that out a bit sooner but I think it's okay I think maybe we have the fuel to afford so I'm gonna move forward a little bit faster and we're about two kilometers up all right Rotation. Translation. go ahead and translate over to get a better line up here and I'm going to go ahead and start taking out some of that forward. Put in just a touch of hover. Taking out a little bit more of the forward. Rotation, translation. And translating over a bit. Taking out a little bit more of my forward velocity. We're almost over the landing pad.
couple minutes left. We have the fuel. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the hover because I'm getting a little nervous about that. And we're almost over the center of the pad, taking out the remaining... Alright, let's go ahead and speed up our descent a little bit. We don't have a whole ton of time left, but we're good on time. We already put down the landing gear. Plenty of fuel. Fuel is not a concern. Go ahead and pretty well zero out. Let's go ahead and add this in, because we are getting a bit low. But we're going to get this one. There's 200. Me. Just trying to eliminate... Getting those audio sputters. Less than two minutes left. We're almost down. Go ahead and turn this off now. So we're really close to the center of the pad. So there's our 100 meter call out. And let's go ahead and slow things down a little bit more. 200 meters. 200 meters. 50. 50 meters. Slow things down even more. 40, slow things down, and yeah, we got this, 90 seconds remaining, plenty of fuel, and we'll go ahead and slow down to a nice, soft <laughs> touchdown, and let's go ahead and take out, I'm trying to basically get my speed here at zero. All right, so we're almost down a minute left. You know what? Let's actually go ahead and speed this up just a little bit. <laughs> Ten. And there's touchdown. Shut that off and brakes. So we did cut that a little bit close on the time. Should have, uh, shouldn't have slowed things down quite so much there in the last few seconds. But nevertheless, we nailed the landing. And yeah, plenty of fuel to spare. In fact, I think that's probably about the most that I've seen. <sighs> All right, another success for the calculation method. So let's go ahead and copy that down. All right, and yeah, and in, in this particular flight, that lined up really well. So maybe what I might wanna do is kind of maybe highlight some of these cells when these line up, you know, when they're close, when they're within a kilometer or so maybe go through and highlight some of the cells where, where things matched up. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that because we, we have time on this video. So let's just take a second here and we'll say, um, we'll make it uh, like that color. So these lined up pretty well. This was pretty far off, so we won't highlight that cell. This is pretty far off. That's pretty far off. That's pretty close. I think this would work, so we'll go ahead and highlight that cell. I think I chose a different color of green there by mistake. What do we want that one? That one's bang on. And, and then before that, we weren't using the method, so we won't worry about these, because only these ones that have the asterisk next to it are when we started using the law of cosines. So... The point here is, you know, maybe by doing some comparison, um, if for some reason you didn't want to go through making a spreadsheet for for this method, which it's not hard to do, um, you know, if you wanted to try to use this percentage method, then maybe by doing some of these comparisons, you know, you can figure some things out, you know, like on this flight. Actually, maybe maybe this one would be the best one, because like, why is there such a big difference here? And is it because the range, probably, probably the range has a lot to do with that. So we, we can say, you know, in a situation like this, when we have such a large range, then we want to begin our burn, you know, almost, let me see here. It's not exactly at the vertical speed, but it's cl it's much closer to the vertical speed than the ground speed. So, you know, I'm thinking like even 30% would still be pretty far from that number. So it'd probably be like 20%. We can actually find that out really quick. Um, if I just put in just for a moment, 
multiply it by uh, 0 0.2 and actually it might even be 10 percent yeah it's closer to 10 percent for this particular flight so let's go ahead and get rid of that get that back to the way it was but yeah by analyzing that you know we might be able to um, you know like I said draw some conclusions but let's go ahead and switch back to the overlay that's going to wrap it up for this video we had another success be sure to hit that like button and I will see you in the next video